Using AutoCAD is about using commands that help you do repetitive things very quickly. It reduces the amount of work you have to do to produce your drawings. And that's the whole point. One of those commands is the hatch command. Let's open up the dimension example file. Now go to the model tab. It's all the way here on the left. Now we're in model space. And let's say that we needed to shade in some of the areas on our drawing here for our item that we've created and we need to show them in a specific way. We want to highlight the holes and highlight the area inside here. We would use a hatch command for that. Well, let's get these center lines out of the way. Go to the Home tab on the ribbon on the Layer panel. Let's use the Freeze option. Pick it. Now pick right there to get rid of those center lines. Press Enter. That's going to get everything out of our way. Well, let's start by using the hatch command. If you go to the Home tab on the ribbon, then to the Draw panel, the Hatch command is right here. There are three different types of hatches that you can kind of create. A hatch, which is a series of different lines in a pattern. A gradient fill, but it has the exact same properties of a hatch. Or a boundary. The boundary doesn't put that pattern inside, but it creates the boundary like you would with the hatch. So it just creates the closed area, but not what goes inside it. But it works the same way in creating a hatch pattern, only it just doesn't. <laughs> so if you have a series of lines and you need to make a closed area, the boundary is a good way to do it. So what you want to do when you start the hatch command is just pick it. And then the contextual ribbon tab for the hatch creation tool will come up. This is what it is. In a contextual ribbon tab, you've probably have noticed, you've seen them in use several different times. The hatch creation tab is one. The text editing tab is another one. Dimension styles tab, etc. A contextual ribbon tab is one that just pops up in a certain context. It's only there when you need it. So it's going to be real simple here to create this hatch pattern. Just pick a point inside this circle. Press enter, and there's your hatch pattern. It's ugly, isn't it? It's not what you wanted, is it? No. But if you zoom in really far, you can see that it does have a hatch pattern to it. Well, we need to change this. There are a lot of different ways to do that. If you select an existing hatch pattern, that will bring up another contextual ribbon tab called the Hatch Editor. And it looks just like the Hatch Creation Tool. The problem here is that our scale for the hatch pattern is way too small. So you come here. And you just type in a new number. Still not enough? There we go. So when you go higher for the scale, it spaces the lines farther apart, makes it bigger. But if I go below one, it makes them even tighter. They get closer together. So this almost looks like a solid fill, even though it's not, though it would print that way. Some of the things you can edit are the angle. Just click on the slider bar and drag it back and forth, or type in the angle you want it to be at. A 45 degree angle of a 45 degree angled line means it's going to go straight up at 90 degrees. An angle of zero will put it back to where it normally is. And you can also make a hatch transparent, it sort of fades it back a little bit. And that's again with the slider bar right here. You can change the pattern, the color, or you can even put in a background fill. Once you're all finished, just click on the Close Hatch Editor button on the right. And there you go. So we have a hatch pattern that's white. It'll put white lines, or it'll put black lines on white paper, and this cyan background color. If we select it again, let's kind of ease that back a little bit with the transparency. Close the Hatch Editor, and there you go. So now we've kind of made our circle. But in this kind of a thing here, it makes this cross section look like that is the steel or the material. And then the rest of this bracket here is the hole. Well, let's just delete that. Start the hatch command again. You can type in the word hatch and pick your point. Let's try a different pattern. If you click on this little down arrow right here, you get this graphic interface of all sorts of different patterns that you could possibly use. There are a lot of them. These brick work great when you want to create the site of a brick house. You also have herringbone patterns, crosses, sand, several different bricks, 
in all sorts of different patterns. You even have some gradient fills. These could give you a really cool effect on a lake or on the side of a building or in any, any different way. Here's some gravel. Or you can even just go with a solid fill. That's up to you. Again, it depends on what you're trying to show, what you're trying to do, and what your needs are. There are a couple of different ways to create your hatch pattern. You can, by default, just pick inside an area, or you can select a closed object, like this circle. In a lot of cases, it's going to have the exact same effect, but not always. It just depends. Like this blue line for the outline of our bracket here is not one single closed item, so I can't select it. I have to use the pick area. I can pick my points here or I can select my area that way. Now, if I have a hatch object that's a little bit different, let's say it's blue and my angle completely different, there we go. I can do a couple of different things. I can do a match properties and change it that way, which is a really nice thing to do. And that's something I do often myself. I'll create a hatch pattern and I won't know what layer I'm on or what I want it to be, but I know I want it to match another hatch object that's in my drawing. So I'll use the match properties. Another thing you can do is when you start the hatch command is to pick on the match properties button right here. Say, I want this hatch pattern to be drawn like this one. So now when I pick my point in here, it automatically matches. That can save you some time too. And you don't have to go into another command. It's all done within the same command. If you want to edit your hatch pattern, you can in a couple of different ways. If I have a line here, and I use the trim command, pick my cutting edge, I can pick my hatch pattern. It'll trim it according to that line. Now, if you select a hatch pattern, you'll get an outline with grips. Now, these grips can be grip edited. If I hover over it, I can stretch that vertex point, which means I can move it to over here, turn my O snaps on, and I can snap right to that point. I can remove that vertex altogether or I can add another vertex. This is very handy and very useful when you want to edit hatch patterns. Now let's say you needed something converted to an arc. You can. Just click the Convert to Arc option, and it makes that an arc. If it's an arc, there's a Convert to Line. It'll keep the two nearest vertex points and just create a new circle here. So wherever you put it, it's going to go from these two points and through your new point. That's simple enough. If you have a hatch and you want a boundary to show up, just select that hatch, the editor comes up, and then pick the recreate boundary. It'll ask you what you want it to do, be a region or polyline. If you want it to be associated with it, say yes in this case, press enter and it draws the line in there for you. Now this line is associated to the hatch pattern. So if I edit this line, the hatch pattern will be edited as well. I can delete the line though, and the hatch pattern remains. Undo that, and if I delete the hatch pattern, the polyline remains. So if you need to create a polyline around a big area, create a hatch, and then recreate the boundary. It's a very useful trick that you can use to create boundaries for areas.